I did just start doing. So after I taped, and I'll, I'll tape that one after, is I just have some of the gloss medium. Mm -hmm. And so I do the edges and let it dry a little bit. And so then that gives the seal. Hmm. And so then they're not bleeding nearly like they were because... Oh, so you're, you're going to paint where the tape is? Yes. Ah, okay. And wherever... Um, I don't have get a lot of bleeding if, when I wasn't doing this, but if I did get any then, again, I want it to look perfect. So then I'd go back and like retape and that took so much time. So this... Um, and I don't know, I saw it online, I don't know if this is what they were using, um, but it's what I had, and it seems to be working yeah, you okay. Could, so. you, could, you could do everything with Liquitex. Yeah. Yeah, as long as I just have to make sure that I'm grabbing the right bottle, that I'm not grabbing the varnish, because they look alike. They just have a different color label, because um, then I wouldn't be able to, to paint over it. And I also probably should put it into another container, but um, I think what Mike was asking too was he having trouble with his um, the lines coming through from when he if he had like paint uh, pencil lines down? Yes, yes, that was one of his comments. Um, I have I was using um, an erasable Coulter's pencil. Um, but then I realized that I had um, these Quilter's Choice pencils and they're water soluble. So once you get the painting done or like once you get your tape down, you could always um, do a little water or I find sometimes this will even lift it up um, or if he's got lines um, after. But even with the acrylic paints, um, because they're water-based, I'm, I'm finding that the lines don't show through as much. Um, the only thing I seem to have trouble with line showing is with orange for some reason. Not even yellow as much, um, and not with white, but my orange paint just doesn't seem to cover over, especially if it's regular pencil. I wonder why. I would think it would have yellow in it. Yeah, well, yeah, and it's the, you know, both the cadmium, yellow, cadmium, orange, but for some reason the orange is... I don't know. It's just like I find um, that one of the things I'm doing on it is using the phthalo green. And that one just is so, I don't know, it's almost opaque when you put it on. And so it takes a lot more. Um, so I'm just going to let dry, that dry for a sec before I do the paint. Um, I'll do this the cheap way here. So you're writing on the tape? Well, this I wrote so that I know, because I have, have three different colors on here, uh -huh. so I don't mess up and put the wrong color. Oh, I <laughs> and see. have to go over uh -huh. it. That's a good idea. <laughs> because that has happened before. Um, and with this one, and that's when I use my magnifier. I usually put um, usually three coats of the paint. Um, it's kind of funny when I hear like the judges' comments on the shows and they're talking about the oil paint and they're always saying, you know, oh, you know, like you can see the brush strokes. And for me, I'm always trying not to have any brush strokes and um, with the acrylic. So. So once I put it down, I just use my fingernail to get the little creases. Um, but you could use, I used to use an old dull knife or even a palette knife. Um, but I would probably wrap the end with a little bit of masking tape, otherwise um, it may tear. A 
probably shouldn't paint out of the tubes, but when I'm using a straight color. You want to paint? No. No, I, I just, because then I feel like I waste. Well, you know, tons of paper plates. No, I feel like I waste paint. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, even like when I mix them up because I had just, um, well, the big colorful one that I, Hello. that I had oh, in here yeah. the first time, I wasn't, didn't really have a concept of how much to mix up. Right. And so I didn't mix up enough. And then I don't do a great job with writing exactly how I mix the paint. And so then mm -hmm. I'd have to, have yep. to figure it out again. Um, even when I try to write it down, they never match. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like me and cooking. Um, somebody asked me what oh, I did. Right. And I don't know because I do it different every time. Yeah. That's the fun of it. Yeah. So, Leslie, do you want to uh, briefly summarize what you did before this? Sure. Put down tape. Hi. Hi. I how put are down you? Tape. Well, I came, I came, with, some, I came with some tape Dennis. on. How are you? Um, yeah, what I was saying, so you had been asking about um, your pencil yes. showing through too. Um, I have found these are a water soluble quilters pencil. Okay. Um, and so they will, um, even with the paint, um, but I'll explain when I do the prep on the sides, I find they come out. Um, and I'm finding that they don't bleed through as much um, because okay. they will dissolve, um, you know, or if you have lines after um, you want to clean up or once you get the tape down, um, you can get some of them off. Now I see you're taking the paint right out of the tube. That, does that give you a more um, thickness to the layer that you're putting down? No, I just... Uh, don't want to waste paint. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm do, like if I like this one, if I have to mix a color, I saved baby food jars from years ago. Um, and sometimes it's just to the time um, of mixing it, or if I put it in the palette, then I'm like, oh, I don't know how much to put in there, and then I'm gonna yeah, um, gonna waste it, but. No, and I don't think this is probably ideal to paint right from the tube because I'm sure I get stuff in the tube. Um, but I haven't found that it, I was afraid it might dry out quicker, um, but I haven't found that. So what I put, this one I had already taped, I'll tape some more sections on there. Okay. Um, and what I just started doing because I saw it online is I used some of that um, and I just painted that on the inside edges first, so then it gives a little bit of a clear seal, and okay. so then the paint's not going to bleed under because that's um, the clear has sealed the edge. Also, uh, so you you put this on before the tape? No, I put the tape and then I just painted oh, okay. right in here, um, yeah. and then that saves me having to go back because I'll go back if I do get any bleeding I'll go back and retape and touch up uh -huh. um, of course nothing's ever perfect and I could keep doing that over and I like I could say oh I finished like even this little black and white one I'm like oh I finished oh nope I see another little little spot I don't like that or, um, and I'm not used to working with canvas paper either On the way over here, I was thinking of, uh, I was wondering if there was a adhesive back paper or something like that, that you could actually cut out what you wanted and then cover your whole piece with that. And then when you change colors, you'd make a new stencil and put it on. I don't know if there's, um... I don't know if there's masking sheets. They make um, duct tape sheets. Really? Yeah, they're not huge. Um, a lot of them are in colors, but they're, you know, like that big, because kids usually get a 
to do crafts when like duct tape when they were making duct tape pocketbooks and different things. Um, so I don't know if, if masking they have. Um, and I don't know how it would work because you could do a stencil and then there's like a stencil adhesive that's not real strong, but I think you'd probably get um, <clears throat> still the bleeding underneath. So now the trick is like which ones I can do that won't <laughs> overlap with other ones or, well, I specifically did one, so I'll have to cut it. Do you try and put the tape down on all of the same color at one time? Um, I try, but that doesn't, um, like especially with this one where there's only three colors, it doesn't work unless I do a lot of cutting. Um, here. So then I'll have to have a, which is why I have a magnifier. Um, That's a good idea. So to get over here, I'm going to have to cut like the corner for this one and the corner for this one in order to be able to do them all. specific artist tape, which is supposed to be for watercolor paper, and maybe because I use cheap Strathmore watercolor paper, but it just rips the paper up every time I've used it. And I've tried doing it for short periods of time and longer periods of time, and I've done the whole stick it on yourself or stick it on the back of the watercolor paper a couple times so it destickifies it a bit, and it's just uh, not working for me. So I gave her a roll to play with. <laughs> so you're, try you're doing it for masking inside, or are you just holding down the outside. Yeah, so then I use then I just use my fingernail to edge? get to uh -huh. make the uh -huh. edges the where edge. um, I used to size. use the edge of yeah. an old knife. Yeah. Um, which will also the, work like, but yeah. I would gotcha. I wrapped it with masking tape um, so that it wouldn't and tear. You pull it, and you pull it flat. <clears throat> Let's do that. Yeah, and I, I had one kind of tape because the used pets for I have fur sticking off the edges of the tape too. What's the music from? There's uh, apartments upstairs. Oh, okay. So, what time is the parade supposed to be today? 4.30 is where they kick off, but it's way down the street, so it won't get down here until like 5.30 or so. It's going to be a brutal night for us. Well, we'll see. Hopefully the rain stops and it's just a bit windy out there. Yeah. But at least it's not freezing. You know, there's been times that it's been frigid Oh, yeah. Frigid cold. I've, been, I've been out <laughs> in, it, in that, yes, when it's icy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was telling my, my husband's got to go rent, a, rent something from Koopman's, and I was telling him he's gets to get it returned before oh yeah before the uh, traffic the parade all right so if you put the tape down and then you paint clear varnish along the edge of the tape mm -hmm. is the varnish not sticky enough so when you peel the tape it separates no, nope. it was well, not varnish. It's the gloss medium. Oh, gloss. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, All right, so it just peels up with the tape, the part that's on the tape. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the same as the the paint. We should be able to get a second coat on that and peel it up. Okay. Um, so you do put more than one coat of paint down. I usually put three. Okay. Um, I was saying I'm ha this one is going to have some straight. I won't use it now, but the phthalo green, which comes out kind of thin, which could have a nice effect, but then the other ones wouldn't be as opaque, and so then that would mess with me. So I, I like it to be 
um, to be on there well. So depending on the, the paint color, some of them I can get away with too. Um, like with the black, the two should be fine. My first failure was five coats, and it still wasn't covering. To me, to me, it didn't. It was white. I was painting with white. Huh. And the, and the pencil oh, oh, still the pencil? still showed. Oh, through. oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you try, like I would usually, um, you know, like if I taped this here and I had a lot of pencil showing, um, I would take an eraser and try to get that off first. Oh, okay. Um, but this, now this particular one, I painted, it's not just gessoed, I painted the white on the background. Okay. Um, my big black and white that I had here before I actually painted all the black and then I taped and painted all the white. I think it's a little bit better finish, but it's obviously twice as much work. Um, but I find that the paint, um, adheres fine to the painted surface as well as it did to the to the gesso. Do you make your own canvases? No, I used to, when I used to paint, um, back when I was in high school, my dad um, was a shop teacher and he used to make the frames for me. Nice. And I used to stretch them, but he's not with us anymore, so. And he used to make frames for me too. <laughs> uh, but I did just find a local woodworker um, because I have a concept for something that I want to do, and um, I might see if he um, also could make some of the float frames for me. Uh huh. Because um, I'd rather do that than order them. And yeah. And this thing that I want to do, I need somebody um, to work with. It's a frame for like a kinetic painting, and I have the idea but I don't know how to execute part of it so and why do you use a canvas and a frame rather than a board um, I actually have a couple boards I've never um, I haven't used them yet mm -hmm. um, the or well the board boards not the canvas boards the canvas board I don't know, I find it's like a rougher surface. I find like I have more problems with, um, even no. if I do a couple coats of gesso, I just find like the stuff does bleed more. Um, maybe, maybe that was part of my problem. <laughs> so do you guys always put gesso on canvas and not just paint right on the canvas? I, I gesso even the canvases that come gessoed. Okay. I still do it. Um, unless I get a black one, because I don't have black, I didn't have a black gesso yet. In my uh, summer acrylic project, the ins all the instructors said to gesso the paper. Okay. And uh, I have some, I don't remember what brand, but it's actually paper for acrylic. And I gessoed some of it, and I didn't gesso some of it. And don't really care. Okay. And they were saying that if you don't do that, the paint will come up. Oh, really? The, the paint will come up if you don't gesso the paper. Oh, really? But if you go look at what gesso is, it's almost identical to titanium white paint. It's you know, kind of the same binder and stuff, so I don't, I don't understand that. But none of mine have come up with their new. No, and even, even this um, canvas sheet, I still, oh, and see, there we go. And there's some pet hair. Um, I even put another coat of gesso on that. Yes, yeah, so if you have, I had everything to bring in. I guess I didn't bring my eraser. Um, just like a regular eraser, like the watercolor. Um, this might. Oh no, this works. All right. This is. Just, so this is the quilter's pencil. So even a quilter's pencil, I find, erases better than. You're right, this kind. Of... 
What are your little flecks of tape there that just to, what color is going in? Yeah, because I have on occasion painted the wrong color in the wrong spot <laughs> and had to redo it, or I just did this shape um, and I was using a, a red and I have three shades and one of the shades, it was just too close to one of the others. And I had done a couple of them and so then I remixed and had to retape and paint those. Yeah, cause I like this one, especially because this is gonna be a different color than these. And so to remind myself. So those are all taped down. You use a really fine brush. Well, for the edges. And see here on this one? Yeah. So this is, that had a line there from that water-soluble pencil. And even that, now it's gone. Oh, yeah. So, so it's a twofer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for, th for this, I was using the small one because I didn't want to get... Um, it wasn't, you know, I don't want to cover the whole thing in, like the whole cell in, uh, in the gloss. Um, yeah, and it depends. I have not done a good job with, like, I haven't invested in brushes or know a lot about having different ones because I'm mostly painting inside tape. So if I'm doing a, a bigger space, I use a bigger, bigger brush. Your brush control is clearly better than mine too. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> trying to do something fine if I brought one of my I have one that I did that has has curves on it and that my eyes aren't that good and I yeah. my hands aren't that steady for doing you know something really fine mm -hmm. like that how do you um, mask off curves same thing with the tape no, I don't only want to have done with curves. I did freehand. Wow. Um, but I did find, I didn't bring it. On, online, I found a, a skinny tape that says it's for curves, but I haven't tried it yet because I don't have a lot of designs that I do with curves. And um, it was really expensive for just a little roll. But you said you had a skinnier. I had some skinny tape, but usually what I do is I've got some two-inch masking tape that I just put down even several pieces of it and then take an X-Acto and cut my curve in it. Oh, okay. And I'll, that's a freehand curve still, but that, that works pretty well. Yeah. And you can go seal the edge of the masking tape. And yeah, I would totally mess up a curve with an X-Acto knife. <laughs> <laughs> you could try a um, auto body shop, because uh, if they do custom painting, they need to do curves if they're like doing flames and stuff like oh, that. Oh, true. Yeah, and I wonder, I don't know if they have, like I said, I don't know if they have masking sheets. But you can get, um, yeah, you could do it the same idea. There is, you know, there's masking tape that's like two inches wide. Yep. Um, so it could do that too. And probably could even, you because you can lay it down a couple times. Mm. Um, yeah. So it could just put it on like um, with the exacto for quilting. The quilters have cutting boards mm -hmm. that use like a rotary cutter on, and so you could put it on that. I'm sure and um, use it for cutting. So I let it dry a little bit um, because otherwise, then it's going to mix with the paint, and so then your edges will be more opaque than the center for your coats and so and again I want everything to be even so um, oh actually well, I do have the darker green so we will see how much thinner that is yeah but I'm telling you I save everything so these baby food jars are great for mixing the paint
Good for you for saving them so long. Uh, well, I don't know if that's... <laughs> If you could see what my barn looks like. <laughs> oh, you have a barn. Oh, I understand. Uh, yes. Amazingly, though, I can remember where most things are, even from... But, yeah, I got a barn, so I've got my kids' stuff, our stuff, my mother's stuff. A lot of projects in there. Future projects. Do you wait till the paint completely dry before you peel the tape up? Yes, I don't. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. Well, my last coat, I'll peel it af just after I've painted. I probably don't wait as long in between coats as I should. Um, it depends. Like, as long as I can touch it, then I'll yeah. put a second coat on and I haven't had trouble. Um, but yeah, I usually don't. I think I would have more pro. I think. In the past, I had more problems with paint that I wanted on the canvas peeling up with the tape if I waited for it to dry all the way on that last coat. But that's always the best part. Unless you peel it up and there's a whole lot of infiltration under the tape. Oh, this paint, I had this paint left over from another. So you got into this in high school because of your art teachers? Um, well, actually, what I didn't do anything with art all through middle school until uh, my eighth grade year. The art teacher that had been at the school forever um, retired, and her version of art class was <laughs> either landscapes, which again, I don't do anything real, or watching pictures of her prize-winning Airedale Terriers. <laughs> um, so I really didn't enjoy art class at all. Um, and then in eighth grade, we got a new teacher and I just used to doodle on graph paper or now what they call Zentangle. I was doing that back in the late seventies. So I guess I missed the boat. Um, but I was just doing that kind of stuff and he saw it one day and he's like, oh, you know, that's something. I'm like, oh, it's nothing. Like, and, um, yeah, see, the phthalo was so, and I don't mind the opaqueness, except I can't get it even. So, um, and so then I, he had, I had me do a mural on the wall in the cafeteria. Um, and then when I got up to high school, I just continued. And I'm actually still in touch. I see that, I've seen that um, teacher because he was also a um, track coach. <laughs> and so I'd see him at, um, at track meets. And then um, my teacher from high school, I'm still in contact with and see, see periodically. Um, so it's really. You were on the track team too? I, yes, I was, a, I was a sprinter and a hurdler, but now I have five kids and they were all distance runners, so perhaps, um, and I coach at our middle school now, so, because I, I like, like middle school kids. Go figure. All right, so this one should give us enough to... You haven't become cynical yet. Yeah, well, and they're, you know, they're still excited to try new things. They're, for the most part, not, um, you know, they're not concerned as much with um, 
you know, trying something and failing, whereas at the high school level, I think that's a little more prevalent. Um, but yeah, they're just excited. They're great teammates to each other. Um, and I just, I love seeing their faces when they, you know, see like from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, their improvements in things, or when they finally get something or um, they're excited for a teammate you know and with track and any kind of running I just think it's great because there's no um, you know you can be the fastest kid on the team or the slowest kid on the team but you can still make improvements every time for yourself and everybody's excited whether you're the person that won the race or you know you just past some milestone that you didn't think you could do. Um, yeah. Well, I guess it's good that other teacher retired. Yes. <laughs> so glad. So do you do other styles as well? Um, not really. Um, I don't do anything realistic. I do uh, like that blown one also. Um, so she blew it with a straw. I just laid the paint down and... <laughs> Again, something that, um, I don't know, I have one from high school that, I mean, I do some, a lot of these I will do, um, you know, just take out the graph paper and doodle and with the black and white, some I'll do with marker, but they're not on like good enough paper. Um, they're usually more what I would consider doodles. And again, then it takes the steadier hand. Um, what I'd like to do, my daughter just got a tablet that she can do all this stuff. I would love to have a computer with a program that I could lay out my design and then try different colors that way before paint, because inevitably I'm just doing the colored pencils or the markers or whatever, and then trying to replicate, but then I'll be like, oh, no, I really don't like how that paint's looked and if I had been able to do it or try some different combinations. Alrighty, so, let's see. Let's see. I got a little bit of... But not too bad. But again, this, I feel like, is also rougher than a regular canvas. That's really clean. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, I was telling this this bigger roll I just opened, and when I put it on here to do the edge, I noticed it's not the edge is not smooth. <clears throat> if you're looking for a graphics program that doesn't cost a fortune or have a subscription. Um, I just loaded uh, Designer 2. Okay. So, um, it just came out with a new version. And it did, I, I got that specifically to try and do this sort of thing. And it works, it's really simple. It's not as complex as the Adobe product. And you can use it on a regular laptop? You don't need to have a tablet? No. All right. In fact, if you want to use it on a tablet, you have to pay extra and you get a different application. But using it on the computer, it's, I think it's $50 or something like that. It's cheap. Oh, that might be good to try. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, I feel like I waste a lot of time yeah. <laughs> doing it the other way. Um, I'm not a fan of the computer-generated art. Right. Like, when I see this kind of stuff online and some of this stuff, I'm like, oh, wow, like, I can't believe somebody took that time and then you know, realize, oh, it might not be. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and so then, they're pretty clean, like, 
and these because I will, um, I haven't put the white on or whatever color. If there's a little bleed with the first coat, usually, or with the first color, usually when you tape for the second one, that's going to get covered up and the slight edge that you have from the first color also gives you a barrier for anything leaking because it will just butt up against um, the edge of the paint once that's taped. But yeah, for the canvas paper, that was all right. Um, and I haven't experimented too much um, to know like if I put this down and let it dry all the way, or there may be another product. I just saw somebody painting something clear online when they were doing it. I'm like, oh, well, I'll try that. So, um, yeah, so there you go. Now you got to do one. Looks great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with this one. But. <laughs> And I'm also looking at this, thinking these look very similar in the colors. Yeah, I know they're not, and I know once I get a couple more coats of of this one on, because it gets really dark. Um, but yeah, I just used it on another painting. So um, does that even out when you put more coats on? Yeah, that's why I. Okay. Um, yeah, and this one is mixed, so hopefully I have enough. I'm probably going to end up with not quite enough to do the last one, and then I'm going to have to mix again and hope I can get it close. <laughs> I was saying it's kind of like when I cook, I don't write down what I do, <laughs> and so I can't replicate a lot of things because it's, you know, I just wing it. Um, I made chicken in the crock pot quite a few years ago now, and it was like my son's favorite thing I'd ever made. And I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> it was one, I think it had beer in it, but I don't know what else there was. And, you know, I'll kind of take a recipe, but, and I, you know, I should, I should write down what I do with the paints, but, you know, how do you exactly measure? <laughs> You know, I try to at least be, be like a, you know, a quarter to three quarters or something. But. I suppose you could have a little gram scale and then squeeze in a little amount and then see exactly what the weight is. Yeah, but then you got to take it off of that. And again, I don't like wasting my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just really terrible. Although I just got a bag of, you know, they were... A couple of the tubes were almost full, and it was just, it was the Liquitex Basics, so the, not, the quality's not quite as good, but um, at Douglas Flea Market, somebody had a bag for 10 bucks, and I had like, I don't know, 10 different tubes of paint in it. Like, just the big tube would have cost me $10, and sure, they were yeah. colors I didn't have, so. Um, <clears throat> you know? And it's just like a quilt or a fabric. Like, who can't use more paints? <laughs> so, yeah, let me see if I've dried it like that. But whether there's going to be enough. And I try to alternate my directions with each, each coat, I can make sure I get into all the little. It looks like the way you're doing this is you get better coverage. I just use a palette paper and squeeze some paint on it and then take it from there. And it, the coverage doesn't seem anywhere near as good as this. Yeah, and that one seems to have covered pretty well. Of course, I'm using Michael's whatever cheap old paint too. Maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> well, I use some. I use some of those or the um, the stock Blick ones, um, and I, I generally, I mean, usually I have the Liquitex or the the Utrecht. Uh -huh. um, the the problem with the Utrecht is the place that I I like made a pegboard to hang all my paints and the Liquitex has 
a little as a little like hanging thing, but there's no good way to hang these. And I tried getting some of the things I could hang a hammer on, but there's none small enough to catch that. So, yep, see, I'm gonna have enough to do, I'm just gonna do two coats on these. Um, I'll have enough to do these three, but I won't have enough to do the last one that I'll need to do this color. On the, uh... I think I was watching on YouTube what they were doing for tubes like that is putting holding the bottom of a binder clip. Oh, that's a good idea. And then I could hang the binder clips on my. Yep, that would work. Excellent idea. Yeah, so normally I do three coats and so I finish going the long way on whatever I'm doing. But I think the two is sufficient. I'm surprised that the acrylic, this stuff, splits so nicely when you pull the tape That off. was what I was wondering about. But it seems to be no problem at all. Yeah. Yeah, and it really, um, I said it really is a time saver. With this is like really super up. clean lines. <laughs> I also have to be careful is that I don't get paint on my fingernail when I'm going to pull it up and then get it on onto the canvas. But then when you do the next color, you have to get the tape exactly on the edge so that they meet properly. Yeah, yeah, so like that's what I did here. <clears throat> But you also have the, that's a good guide it's for good. you to put it down. Yes, the biggest problem is with this tape, if I'm doing something in blue and then I'm going to <laughs> tape something that's already blue, so then sometimes I'll go to the regular masking because, or I got, I have a purple one too, um, because I can't see where I've taped. <laughs> This one I won't be able to pull up right because this one I've had to do four coats because even here with the two coats it's still so transparent. But there you go. Okay. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Oh, yes, okay. thank you. You're welcome. It's been, and I got good ideas from, from <laughs> things too, so. Even better. Well, I feel inspired now. <laughs> yeah. Try again. <laughs> Yeah, I would say not to try it on the canvas board, though. Or if you're doing a canvas board, I would probably put, um, I'd probably put at least two coats of my own gesso on it. Okay. Because I do, I find that the, um, it's real that, rough. The, that the weave is just not as fine. Yeah. So, and so then, I mean, the other way to deal with that, when you were saying, he was saying it uses, um, like the liquid mask. Uh-huh. Um. That would get into any grooves, but I've never, I've never tried it. I was going to try it for curves, not for the, the straight. Um, but that would get down into the curves. But that could be part of the problem too—that it's just not fine enough. 
Yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough surface. Yeah, so sometimes I'll use those for, um, although I have taped and sprayed. on canvas board and the, the tape's been okay. Um, Spray paint? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> or experiment, like put gesso down on some and try one and then put some paint down on one because the paint might might give a little bit better surface too. Like this is this one's on paint. This is just on gesso. What um, is that material that you're painting on there? It's just the canvas paper. Oh, okay. Like I got a, a pad of it, which I never used before. Oh. Huh. Um, but it's kind of, yeah, that's what um, that like little red one um, is on the canvas paper too. That was the first time I tried it. I'm just used to usually, I, these small ones are unusual for me. I'm used to big. <laughs> but I was telling Lisa my biggest problem with any of these is I have my design, but then expanding it up onto the big canvas because I don't want to draw a whole grid because right. then there's way too many things to erase. Um, <laughs> and canvases, of course, aren't, if it says it's 10 by 20, it's not 10 by 20. So you can't divide anything evenly. And I had laid out a whole one, you know, I started with my right angles from the end, but then one side had a little extra and I didn't like that so I erased it and, or no I think I just gessoed over it and moved it so both of them had a little bit of a partial design because I could I'm like I every time I look at this I will see it <laughs> so and I forgot to bring the projector for you so I'll send myself a note to oh that's all right that's all remember right. to get that at some point okay well I'm going to take off but thank you that's very interesting now I have beautiful color water yeah, the greens really do that oh yeah well this is this the cobalt green I think that is my absolute favorite color yeah. I absolutely love that color this is really helpful thank you well you're welcome <laughs>